Hello, I'm Owen. And I'm Susanna. And this is our fourth little episode thing. Yeah. Watching our videos back and commenting on them. Number four. Um, chapter 19, page 25. Yeah. It's kind of an uh, interesting number to have started on. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little weird to have started in the middle of chapter 19. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> um, so this is probably one of my favorite types of page to make, which is, um, it's a little transitional. It's between, um, you know, it's right at the beginning of the scene and then also it's not really started the scene yet. It's kind of just a joke. Um, but yeah. it's, uh, it's uh, a joke that's a little awkward <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just love like awkward, uh, misunderstanding humor like this. I don't know, especially when it's kind of inconsequential and. I don't know. It cracks me up. The, yeah. <laughs> the idea of it makes me laugh when I go to put it on paper. And so I, I always wonder, I think when we get, um, I don't know, maybe like halfway through mm. making the page, mostly um, when it's too late to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder if people are going to think it's as funny as I think it is. <laughs> Usually when it's exactly as much uh, work is invested in it as would be really not a good idea to stop. <laughs> But I really, I don't know, I had a good time, and I always have a good time writing pages like this. Yeah. Um, and when I do finish them, I look back and I'm like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, in the grand scheme of things, it's it's kind of like a silly little page, but um, whatever. Things that crack me up, I have to leave in for myself. Yeah, little character things. I don't know, I actually really like this page too, and uh, it cracks me up, so <laughs> it's good. I think, like, as long as we end up laughing at it. I feel yeah. Success. I think if I can make you laugh, even with a silly little joke, I consider that a success. Yeah. Even if nobody, I feel like even if nobody understood that I was making a joke, mm -hmm. um, as long as I got a chuckle out of you, I guess so. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's this page. How do you feel about it now that it's all? Um, I actually really like this one, uh, mostly because I really like getting to show more of Matt and his personality, because mm -hmm. I feel like we see him a lot in his kind of professional setting, Yeah. but now he's, that he's becoming more comfortable with just being like a friend mm -hmm. that like just happens to know someone and like, sure. sits down and just can be himself, Sure. you get to see a little bit more of him. <laughs> I like that this page feels really similar to the first time we saw him, too. Yeah. Um, I think the first time... Uh, the first time we saw him, he was, um, is he s snoring or snorting? I'm not sure. <laughs> the first time we saw him, he was telling Liam that there was a phone he could use. Yeah. And it had that same kind of <laughs> passive aggressive kind of tone to it. <laughs> you know, when he was brand new and first on the page, it was like, <laughs> is that a joke? <laughs> I really enjoy, I don't know, that kind of, um, really stunted, awkward kind of <laughs> interaction that, uh, that comes from, uh, I don't know, when you haven't really gotten a read on how sarcastic a person is yet. Yeah. Um, and how, I don't know, someone being sarcastic once you do know them better can start to be something you're fond of them for. Whereas yeah. at first maybe it kind of pissed you off about them. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't really appreciate it. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of that abrasive kind of attitude, but just... It just comes from introversion more yeah. often than not, where it's just like... Being a little awkward. Yeah, a little awkward with other people, but it's like still at least able to socialize yeah <laughs> it makes me laugh i really enjoy it yeah it's my favorite kind of people they're fun <laughs> yeah i agree most of my closest friends are very um uh sarcastic yeah. i would say um abrasive in the best way yeah and i really i really enjoy that feature and so i, I end up putting that feature in a lot of my characters i think yeah it's sincere yeah <laughs> for sure fun. for sure um, so speaking of favorites, mm -hmm. favorite kinds of pages and mm -hmm. favorite kinds of uh, things to do. I think last last time we talked, we talked a little bit about stuff we don't like drawing. Yes. Stuff we don't like doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought it would be interesting to talk about then what kinds of things we do like doing the most. Right. When it comes to maybe first drawing. Yeah. And then also like about making comics in general, like what our favorite parts of making comics are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just because I think it would be, I, I feel like I know when it comes to you, at least in terms of like I've been able to observe what kinds of things that I've gotten positive feedback from you about <laughs> when you get to do them. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But I think it'd be interesting also to hear what um, what you actually would put in words. 
if asked. So right. I want to start by asking, what are your favorite things to draw, like in general? Not even just for comics, but just drawing in general. You know, it's kind of funny. I feel like you probably will have some ideas that I didn't even think of. Okay. Which uh, I'll be really interested to find out okay. what those might be. Okay. Um, so ideas about what you like draw. Oh, you mean like in terms of like what yeah. I've observed that you've given good feedback yeah. about when I thumbnail it for the page and then you say, oh, I like drawing this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So I guess for my answer, I really like expressions. Mm -hmm. I, I like um, I like when I get to draw like a lot of like interesting weird poses. Like okay. Getting, like really weird dynamic poses and angles. Sure. I do have a lot of fun with those. That's yeah. Okay. Um, and I actually do like backgrounds a lot. I like a lot of plant life. Um, I think that's I think that's about what I would say. So you like dynamic facial expressions, dynamic poses. Yeah. I would have weird definitely angles. said that about you for sure. Yeah. Um, I think when I observe the things that you draw for fun, mm -hmm. between pages especially, mm -hmm. um, when you're like sketching warm-ups and stuff, I definitely observe that you, you like um, choreography. Yes. A lot. I and, love choreography. Um, you keep up with a, a couple choreography studios and watch mm -hmm. their uh, YouTube videos as they come out. Yeah. And I've definitely seen you um, watch a video like three or four times <laughs> and then find a pose that you really like pause it and then do um like uh i guess like a study yeah the gesture drawing yeah gesture drawing and then maybe flesh it out into like a full sketch um, yeah and a lot of those end up going onto our patreon um i really <laughs> those are some of my favorite stuff that you do and i think it's such a disservice <laughs> that it doesn't really make it into the comic it's so yeah. much you know what i mean because milo um he currently works for his mom his mom owns a dance studio mm -hmm. and he works for his mom um, teaching classes. Yeah. So um, he would have multiple um, jobs within that, depending on, like, what kind of class he'd mm -hmm. be teaching. He'd teach kids for performances, recitals, yes. right? And also, like, learning the, the basics of beginner dance. Yeah. He, um, for his job, he would actually do some choreography. I feel like that would be a more recent thing that he would have been given. Okay. Um, That's a little more advanced. Yeah. Okay. It, it is a more advanced thing. Um when we last saw him in the dance studio, he was actually doing choreography for a younger class. Yeah. And he had actually made that choreography. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that yeah, was yeah. like, that would have been his assignment. It was just basically like, give this class choreography and like, that'll be something that he can now like go forward with experience. For like done. a recital, right? Mm -hmm. Something like, most like Swan Lake. So that was, that yeah. was Swan Lake. Okay. Um, I actually forget which song I had picked for it. It really didn't matter. <laughs> it's that's so That's the worst relevant. part. Oh, that's the worst part about making comics is how much audio presence I wish could be part of it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Especially when you have such a musical character. Yeah. And especially like when there's times where like, I'm delighted to write lyrics for something <laughs> do you know what i mean and there's no way to con like convey it in an yeah. audio way do you know what yeah. i mean and it's so it's such a bummer um i have some ideas about ways to maybe fix that maybe not mm -hmm. fix it but maybe add to it in yeah. the future with supplement. future projects yeah supplement mm -hmm. with future projects but i won't talk too much about that right now but um but you're right that <laughs> song selection is not super um important when it comes to those pages but um yeah but we did get to see Milo um, doing choreography and also yeah. like working at the studio. He actually really enjoys that job. He likes yeah. working with dance, even though it's not necessarily what he wants to do as a career. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe he, he doesn't know how big a role that's going to play in any of his future career. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like his, it's more like a hobby that he gets paid for that he really likes at yeah. this point. Um, but it's such a shame that I don't get to explore it as much as I wish I could. Um, just because it, it never feels like it fits in with the overarching plot yeah. of the comic. And because everything, everything we decide to do takes up so much real estate. Yeah. That, and takes months. Like yeah. a scene can sometimes take, if not like four weeks, then two or three months yeah. to get through. So it's like I've looked for every opportunity I could find to like give you like more. Yeah. But like... People don't talk while they're doing choreography, so it never yeah. moves the... It, there's not really much that you could do with that. Yeah. And it's like, when he teaches younger classes, like, what, is he going to have a conversation with his boyfriend <laughs> about their, like, yeah. their living situation in yeah. front of, like, a bunch of, like, 10-year-olds? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
side. It, it never like it never moves the core plot, and it never really moves any of the side plots. Either. Yeah. So I've tried to like fold it in as much as I can to move some of the side plots. Yeah. There. Like when we saw him at the studio, getting to see him interacting with his mom, and how mm-hmm. it's kind of like. It's really awkward mm-hmm. that he's interacting with his mom, but he likes that job. Yeah. He likes doing it, but he's not super sure where he stands with her. Yeah. So it's like this kind of like, Milo's a very, um, like there's so much good and bad mixed up in everything he likes. Yeah. You know what I mean? He he likes things really deeply, but then simultaneously there are parts about them that he loathes mm-hmm. really deeply. And it's so, he's very like conflicted about almost anything he's into. Yeah. Most everything that he has is kind of, um, it has another underlying layer of something that he either really hates or makes him feel really bad about himself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot that he has going on in his life that he likes thoroughly yeah. entirely for itself you yeah know I mean? he always manages to find like a a piece of it that really is bad for his self-esteem or yeah. whatever so it's not even really at any fault of his own if anything it's my fault <laughs> <laughs> i think it's um but i mean he's in a big he the things he likes a lot are very performative yeah um so i think that it's difficult um when your biggest interests lie in things that are gonna require direct um critique and feedback that may not be very positive yeah and he's a sensitive boy he's very sensitive so um so he's definitely going to kind of be um a little affected by having to just absorb tons of negative criticism and i don't feel like it's the criticism so much that bothers him as it is just like there are parts of the process for him that hurt his feelings. Yeah, they're just emotionally draining. Yeah. And for someone who leads everything in his life with a lot of feeling, yeah. like, it ends up affecting him a yeah. lot. So, knowing that, <laughs> I definitely would have said choreography, posing, yeah. is definitely up there that I've observed that you really like. And um, I think um, I can definitely find ways to tie that into future projects, too, mm-hmm. um, which I'm very excited about. Um and I think, yeah, that would have definitely been up there. I would have said um, expressions is not surprising mm-hmm. to hear, but I wouldn't have thought to say it. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. It's one of my favorite things to write. Yeah. Is like expression changes. Mm-hmm. So um, so I'm really glad <laughs> that you like that. Um, let me think. Um, I've definitely noticed that you have some characters you like drawing more than others. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Honestly, sometimes that even changes with my mood at the time. Yeah. Um, uh, Caleb from our second yes. story is something that I, I go to a lot because I enjoy um, his entire aesthetic. Yes. Um, Caleb is the main character of the comic we're working on next. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely be picking it up very shortly. Mm-hmm. The Death of Caleb Perkins. Um, mm-hmm. I agree he's very aesthetic. Yeah. And I, when I say that, when I say he's very aesthetic, I don't mean like that in a general complimentary mm-hmm. way. I mean it as in like, when, when we designed him, we definitely picked our favorite things to draw. Yeah, his uh, hair was something that I enjoyed drawing, and it's yeah. kind of meant to be like light and fluffy. It catches air yes, really yeah. easily. Um, it suits your style. Yeah, better I, than I a lot of hairstyles that I've designed <laughs> in the past that I think were have been like difficult to cram into your style. Yeah, you know what I mean this is very in line with what your style does well. Yeah, he was he was basically just like a lot of like my favorite little things to draw, right mm-hmm. down to his like his fashion choices. Suspenders. A yeah. lot of like the Victorian kind of styles. The high waisted pants, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, then also like the states of half dress because he's always Yeah. likes to like be removing of his clothing. He doesn't like to be restricted. Yes. So it ends up being fun. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I really like one of my favorite things when I used to draw more. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite things to draw is um not even like states of undress in like a sensual way or anything Mm -hmm. like that but it's really interesting to me to look at like a complete outfit Mm -hmm. and to think about what steps go into like that person's morning routine in order to get them looking like that state do you know what i mean so one of my favorite things to write is using someone's outfit as a prop Mm -hmm. almost like it's background noise it doesn't super matter to the dialogue that's coming out of their mouth but i love i love looking at it so i love writing it alongside morning dialogue to kind of show like i don't know just like an interesting study to me if somebody wears suspenders you know and high-waisted pants over Mm -hmm. like a dress shirt but then also it's victorian era 
and like their the way that their underwear goes on <laughs> under their clothing is slightly different than how we do it today. Yeah. There's something about that process of like dressing, yeah, that is super interesting to me. And then likewise, when you see a lot of like historical photos of people in you know this is the complete outfit of the day mm -hmm. you also sometimes a little more rarely will see outfits that people they, they've dressed to the nines mm -hmm. to go out in public and then they got somewhere and it wasn't a super formal place to be mm -hmm. so they could like undo their clothes to be slightly more yeah. like the way that we would like you know you unbutton your first two buttons on your yeah. dress shirt or something or like i guess you'd roll your sleeves up mm -hmm. on what your hoodie or whatever yeah. they had to have like the certain way that they're their clothing would be in relaxed state. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Looks slightly different even than you would expect it to. Yeah. And that's really interesting for me too. Like with vests and everything and yeah. how it would hang or how you would actually like loosen your tie. Yeah. Yeah, especially because like our modern ties aren't really similar. Right. Like yeah. Like they had a lot of like the um, ascots and the things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's actually a lot of fun to play with that because you get like the pins and everything. I love that. Because uh, my second favorite character to draw, actually, would be Lynn. Yeah, Lynn. Yeah. Um, so Llewellyn has, like, really fun, like, uh, shapes because he's very angular and he's very sharp. Yes. And all of his clothing is very, like, tight-fitting and rich. Yes. So yeah. he's, like, my other end of the spectrum of, like, very fancy boy that I like to draw. Yes, for sure. I definitely, I would say that both of them are definitely, like, when we designed them, it was really, like, what would we... What would be the most self-indulgent, <laughs> the purest, basest, most fun thing do, <laughs> most most fun thing to do for an extended amount of time? Yeah. What would that look like? <laughs> and it was truly like that's what went into it. Just you know what I mean? Just okay. purely, just like, what do I get to do that would just be pure, thorough, just for me, <laughs> a present only to myself? Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah, for sure. I would definitely say that of both of them. Yeah, they're both really fun for that. Um. And even from them, like, if I were going back to toy, uh, Milo is, like, almost exactly what I also design for. He's... Pure self-indulgence. Yeah, pure yeah. self-indulgence. He's um, into ballet, so he mm -hmm. has, like, a very ballet body. He's yeah. kind of kind of muscular, but also very lithe. Mm -hmm. um, his hair is, like, long, curly. I get to have a lot of fun with drawing how he actually like, curls it, how he pull it up, and how he pin it back. Yeah, the hairstyles um, that come with, like, dance. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A lot of the ways that he can actually, like, wear his clothing, and especially because he also likes to be in states of undress. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I don't know, that seems to be a theme with him. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, like, with more modern clothes, it's, like, a tank top that's, like, fitting kind of baggy because he's pulled out the neck. Sure, yeah, or he, like, a fidgets. He's, he's a very, yeah. like, fidgety person. He, yeah. He definitely, like, fidgets with his clothing and kind of loosens it mm -hmm. over the course of seeing him in it especially yeah. in like kind of nerve-wracking scenes yeah. you definitely start to see him like I just unravel himself yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah so like when he used to wear his uniform he would end up having like his tie like it would I love, yeah you would definitely see like the knot of the tie like get lower and lower and lower yeah. as the scenes would go I think that happened in the wedding too mm -hmm. where he, and I think he was like physically doing it because he was nervous at the yeah. time and Hebert was making him kind of nervous yeah so he was like physically Tugging his tie like askew, and then there's a point yeah. where Liam just goes up and kind of like <laughs> and kind of fixes it. Fix that. Yeah, <laughs> it's very fun. I like I like when you draw stuff like that. Yeah, so that is um, one of my favorite things to thumbnail too. Yeah, I could definitely see that being something that comes from their uniform days where Liam just quietly notices, fixes it, <laughs> and it's just like Milo doesn't wear ties that often anymore, so he doesn't have to do that as much. Sure, and now he's really once he ever does, it's really <laughs> gotten to the advanced stages of. <laughs> Wanting to yank it off of yeah, himself, just, yeah. There's something on my neck. I'm just gonna pull it. Uh, pull it. <laughs> I gotta get it off. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so Milo's very self-indulgent. Yes, extremely. Um, I don't, since we're doing favorites, I don't want to dip too much into characters that we don't like drawing. Yeah. But, um, but briefly. Yeah, I guess we kind of covered ones that you, you didn't yeah. enjoy, like the short hair. Yes. Um. I don't know that there's any characters that I particularly dislike drawing, though. Sure. Because um, I even really like drawing Eli. I love drawing mm -hmm. his beard. I have a I lot think of fun with that. The fact that I like drawing Eli's shows and the fact that he's in every mini comic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really like drawing Eli. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Alphonse, I love drawing. Oh, yeah, I really yeah. love his nose, and yeah. I love the way that his, like, his face is shaped. Yes. He was actually very self-indulgent sure, for me. Sure, sure. Um, when I first started drawing him, like, I used to have a lot of fun with his, like, angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, his hair, which is supposed to be, like, that mix between, like, parts of it are kind of 
pulled out into being straight, but sure. it's got a little bit of a wave. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. curly the same way that Liam's and Eli's. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. It is kind of like um, uh, haphazardly yeah. curly in some spots and straighter in others. Yeah. He's a little messy, and I, I really like that. That about is him. fun. Yeah, that is really fun. <laughs> um, I really like uh, geometric shapes yes. when I draw, um, especially lately. I've really like kind of grown into liking that and, yeah. and trying to play with that more when I do sketch. So characters that do have like very geometric features mm -hmm. are really interesting and I really like drawing them. So I do like Alphonse. Um, I like Lynn because his nose is very like hawk nose. Mm -hmm. um, He's got that like beautiful, um, oh I forget the term for it. I want to like say it's like um, Caesarian or something but it's yeah, not quite it that. it's an A I think. I don't oh, remember. I know I'm gonna find it later, and I'm gonna feel awful Just that I yourself. forgot it. Yeah, it's um, it's it's slightly um more pronounced at the bridge. It sticks out slightly at the bridge, mm -hmm. and I really like sketching that because you can pull it out and make it look more geometric. Yeah. In a sketch, and I really enjoy things like that. Um, yeah, I was always a I little. Busy. <laughs> I, busy. I was always a little jealous. I have family that has that kind of nose, and I always yeah. thought it was so cool. I have like the very slightest hint of it, and mm -hmm. it just. Did it come to fruition? No, it's nice though. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. But I, I really love that like that shape of nose. I find it yeah. just so beautiful. Yeah. I really like it. You like drawing noses mm -hmm. quite a lot. Yeah, I, I love noses. Yeah. <laughs> I actually would say that that's something that I've observed that you really like. So mm -hmm. if you have characters that have like very pronounced noses, mm -hmm. um, Matt has a very pronounced nose. Yeah. Um, Matt's nose was meant to be like a unifying uh, um, character design point. Yeah. Um, since his design changes so drastically between um, the times that we see him. Yeah. Um, so he's meant to have like kind of a, a nose that stands out a little bit. Yeah, the cute round nose. <laughs> I, I love like a round nose. I think yeah. it's just so cute. Yeah. Um, and also like I give him that little bit of freckling right across the nose bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and then also his colors. Are supposed to be very yes, like, that's true. Yeah, because he's got that kind of like dirty blonde brown. Yeah, color. that very like tan hair, tan eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, is I, I don't use it much, but when I do, it's it's very like oh, this was important. To, yeah, you know what I mean. It helped convey the same character twice, despite yeah. like a big design change between them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's he's very indulgent too. Yeah. I, what character in here isn't a little indulgent? I, yeah, I? that's true. <laughs> that's true. I mean, um, I would say, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Even even Hebert, I really love his like floppy hair. I actually really like drawing that. Well, I'm glad you like drawing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Unfortunately, it's less fun to color. But I'm glad. I really I'm glad like that color. some part of the process is enjoyed. <laughs> um, I really liked. Uh, we did an extra with him a little while back that um, mm. I got to draw his hair in a lot of different angles, and I really like the way his hair like actually moves. You like it in motion. Yeah, because yeah. as he like moves his head, like because it's very thin and kind of hangs the way it does, it pulls to really interesting angles to me. I can't remember off the top of my head if I enjoyed coloring it more in yeah. motion. Probably I did. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's a little quaked when he's not in motion. Like he does have it like held to very specific places. Yeah. It does like fall behind his ear. He like pulls it back, and then sure. it just stays in place. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. He has no reason to like. He's not the kind of person that's going to like flip his head around a lot and like move it. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, he's not like Milo, where like Milo like does fidget and move his head a lot. Yes, that's true. Yeah, so. and he has a lot more hair, so when it yeah. fidgets, it kind of drastically changes the shape and the way it's drawn. Too, yeah. So. Yeah, that's definitely true. Fair enough. Um, so I would say I think I already touched on some of my favorite things to color. Mm -hmm. I would say because I do coloring a lot more than I do draw. Yeah. Um, I would definitely definitely say hair and skin mm -hmm. are my favorites. Um, I've definitely noticed how much you really like drawing or coloring skin. I really do. Um, more now than mm -hmm. I ever really used to. It's probably, it's my favorite thing to color only because I always like it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas like, um, how do I put this? Because every panel requires you to do the exact same thing from start to finish. Mm -hmm. I think about this a lot. Every panel requires a sketch, inks, right, color, flatted the exact same way, colored the exact same way, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, even if there's different content in each panel, like if you have a really dynamic pose mm -hmm. in a panel, then drawing it, sketching it, and inking it will be a different process yeah. than drawing somebody just talking. Yeah. Right? Like, it is a totally different, it'll draw from different parts of your brain. Mm -hmm. It'll draw from, it'll be more fun to do. It's like a more active 
mental puzzle yeah. that you get to do, and it actively feels different, yeah. right? And even when someone's, like, talking, and it's kind of baseline, um, really similar art between when they're just having a conversation, like, mm-hmm. if you slightly change the angle of the room, yeah. or if you have a different expression coming through in a moment, that's a different drawing, and mm-hmm. it draws from a different part of your brain, mm-hmm. right? Um, coloring is so monotonous. Yeah. It really true. there is nothing, even if the difference between coloring something that's super dynamic mm-hmm. and posed really dynamic and coloring something that's more static. Yeah. In the same lighting. Yeah. If the lighting hasn't changed, if um, the area, the scene hasn't changed, it will be the exact same, like, because c- your, your lighting isn't really going to typically change dramatically from the start to the end of the page, right? Yeah. So let's say on this page we have six panels. Mm-hmm. The lighting remains the same through all of them. Mm-hmm. Liam's face, every single time, is yeah. colored the exact same way. Yeah. There is no deviation. Do you know what I mean? Maybe very slight. If he's, like, moving his head a little, then maybe the shadow falls slightly differently. Yeah. But it is monotonous. Yeah. It is a really monotonous process. So, because sometimes things get monotonous, I'll start to like things slightly less. Right? Yeah. If I have to color the same person's hair six <laughs> times... <laughs> If I were to color this, I love that you laugh. If I were to color the same person's hair six times within the span of I don't know a seven or eight hour time frame, mm-hmm. I don't like hair anymore. <laughs> I don't like coloring hair anymore. I hate it. <laughs> this is the worst. And if heaven forbid you get like two pages ahead of me mm-hmm. on like a like a you know what I mean? Like if we're like trying to like like bull rush a couple pages yeah. ahead, and I'm doing something else that like I can't keep up totally simultaneously. Yeah. With, if I have to do like two pages in a row <laughs> if i have to color the same person six times two mm-hmm. 12 right did yeah. i do my basic math correctly <laughs> six 12 <laughs> times in i don't know however long it takes me to do it yeah i hate everything i hate i don't like <laughs> hair i don't like skin i don't like any i don't like anything i don't oh, like no. it but no i will say skin survives that i yeah. like skin every time even if it's well, monotonous i still really like coloring skin faces expressions yeah. hands I love coloring hands. You know what I mean? The yeah. whole thing. So <laughs> that doesn't change. But everything else totally is subject to, like, how novel it is. Yeah. Like, if it's new. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's, like like I said, it would be the same for me. Like, it depends on my mood at the time, which sure. character I like. Yeah. Because it's, like, sometimes there will be some days where I'll go into, like, draw Milo, and I'm just like, oh, my God, I just <laughs> cannot draw him right now. Why is he even in the comic? I'm like, oh, for some reason he's just not coming out right, or for sure. some reason I'm just mad at him. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> yeah. just, you know how, like, sometimes, like, you'll go to draw a character, and it's like, I don't, I, I'm just not able to do it right now. I'm not feeling it. Yeah. And, yeah, you'll you'll get, like, mad at the character for no no particular reason. It's not their fault. They didn't do sure. anything. They just existed. <laughs> Barely, even. Barely. Fictionally. Yeah, fictionally. And, I, and I'm the one who's the reason they're even existing there. So what's my problem? <laughs> but it's just, like, you know, it, it's for whatever reason, when you go to, like, draw something, and you, you have probably drawn it, like, maybe like seven or eight times already that day sure it becomes difficult to draw it the ninth time sure for no reason other than just like your brain wants something new yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I think that's why a lot of people go to doing like a silhouette or something sure. um which i i really like drawing silhouettes i do find they do kind of break that monotony of sure um struggling to draw draw a character when you just go to their silhouette for a little bit that makes sense yeah or like a part of them like you focus on their eyes or something. Yeah. And you can get right back into, like, oh, I actually really like drawing your eyes, or... Right, and find the joy in it and kind yeah. of try to bring it back to something that's less frustrating. Yeah. Um, I will say that when I get frustrated coloring, it's always from a place of, like, having a tantrum. Never <laughs> from, like, a real sincere place. Because I know what you're talking about when it's like, oh, you know, I've drawn this thing six times, but the mm-hmm. seventh time is really giving me trouble, or yeah. whatever. I know what you mean when you say that. Mm-hmm. That's not really <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about when I mean, like, coloring becomes a struggle. It really, truly is like how do i get my brain to not want to quit doing like a your, thing your brain just throwing a tantrum like a three-year-old yeah yeah like no i don't want chicken like, <laughs> why i don't want it i don't want chicken it's not even especially difficult compared yeah. to what it was the last it doesn't take me a ton of mental process mm-hmm. to color and that's kind of why I, I took it on in the first place it's like oh I can this is easy enough I can probably do this you yeah. know what I mean but um <laughs> at least at, like you know for this project this project is a very like simplistic kind of cell shaded style it's, yeah. it's pretty simplistic um there are a lot of ways mm-hmm. to color that are very 
brain intensive yeah and require a lot of mental effort um which which i aspire to and mm -hmm. admire when other artists do yeah um absolutely thrilled with some of the comics I consume yeah. and also the way that their colors look and I can see that it is a huge effort imparted but yeah. at least like the system that I have it's not a mental effort to do besides like okay just trying to like put your brain into the space of like where the shadow gets cast or anything like that you know what yeah. I mean um and maybe in, in selecting colors when you start a brand new scene mm -hmm. to make sure that they look good but for the most part carrying it through for me more of the challenge is just keeping myself on task yeah <laughs> instead of um i don't know i don't know <laughs> <Being distracted. laughs> yeah exactly just wanting to distract myself from the monotony i guess yeah so um on that note <laughs> i want to know because it is a process that is very monotonous and very mm -hmm. repetitive mm -hmm. and requires you to do the same tasks over and over and over again sometimes mm -hmm. making comics yeah um what are your favorite parts of the process of making comics Oh, overall? overall. Um, honestly, I actually enjoy a lot of the research that goes into parts of it. Oh. So, um, like, with Dokapa, I get the research of a different era, sure. which is a lot of fun, yeah. um, studying things through that. With Toy, um, a lot of it is like, okay, well, I know, I know where they live. Yes. I know the street, I know exactly which apartment. Sure. I know um, right down to like street corners, I can immediately go to it on a map really quickly. Sure. Um, so the second it goes to like, okay, you need them at a restaurant, I can now start researching like what restaurants in the area, what is like something that they would actually go to. Um, and then I get the fun joy of, was that even open in 2010? Sure, <laughs> yes, because the, the, the comic started, so we started making it in 2011. Yes. Um, and we'd started prepping it the year before. Yes. So, and when we just started, we had picked, well, we'll probably have it start, like, maybe, like, 2008. Yeah. Right? Like, 2008 feels like a kind of good... It was, that was, 2008 was technically when their story originally started. Sure. Um, I think we started writing it in 2007. Right. As, like, a future thing. Sure, sure, really sure. Fun. Yeah, like, maybe, like, the, in the year 2008 or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the, the long distant year <laughs> ahead in 2008. This, the, with the, um, the Jetsons-esque, <laughs> we'll have all flying cars. Yeah. And, and motor shoes and all kind. Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, we just started, um, so when we started in 2011, it felt super relevant and normal to yeah. set it in 2008 and it yeah it was recent enough to still be relevant yeah and that was where their story started so it made sense to actually set it starting there exactly and now it's taken us 10 years yeah to get to this point <laughs> two years later in their story yeah and it's starting to feel more and more um distant distant really yeah. really truly distant yeah it, it's very weird how distant that time actually is where it's like a lot of things haven't changed, so they kind of seem deceptively um, modern. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, l little things, like, I don't know, the iPhone. Yes, seems it's right. Deceptively so, modern. let's see, iPhone came out in, I, I want to say 2008, 2008, 2009. You know, it must have been 2008. It was 2008, yeah. And, um, and so, people had it immediately, yeah. right? It was like kind of like, oh, new tech. You can yeah. get, go grab that iPhone. It's like the, you you maybe were really into the BlackBerry before yeah. and you wanted like the cutting edge tech. BlackBerry yeah. is brand new too, by the way. But um, yeah. but now iPhone's out, brand new. Look at this, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And so like, and it was and it was such the thing that like a lot of people did have it, but a lot of people totally didn't. Yeah. And it was super normal still. If you still had a flip phone, super yeah. normal. Yeah, I had a flip phone until 2012. Yeah. So, like... Super I, normal. It and it's completely normal. And you could kind of feel like, oh, my friend has an iPhone, mm -hmm. and they're kind of, like, ahead of the curve, and I feel kind of left out. My flip phone barely... Yeah. It kind of gets internet, but not really. And it's not a website that comes up. It's more like a list of texts. Text, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, like... Oh, those were the days. Right? Like, you could kind of text the web server, and they would give you back, like... I don't know, like the weather. Yeah. <laughs> and a list. I, I remember very specifically, because I had a flip phone in 2012, yeah. there used to be that you could Google things by texting Google's number. Oh. Um, and it was... It was something like six five five six four. <laughs> you remember the number? I I don't. I'm not certain. Sure, that sure, is. sure. Yeah. Whatever it is, it was Google without the e. So oh, you spell it out across, and okay. that was the number you text. 
Google. It was, yeah, G-O-O-G-L. <laughs> That's but crazy. Without the, um, so you would text, like, oh, like a basic question, like, um, what's the capital of whatever state? Would it text you back the answer? Yeah, it would text you back the answer. Wow. So I would do that. Archaic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, the past sure is crazy. <laughs> but so that was the thing. So, like, it was normal. It was pretty normal. Yeah. Maybe, like, oh, I'm cheap. I don't want to buy it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or, like, oh, I'm not paying for it, and I don't want to ask somebody to buy it for <laughs> me or whatever. Or, you know, I'm trying to save my money, and I don't really want to indulge. Or even at the time, it was, like, to go up to the iPhone um, required you to go up in your payment plan too mm -hmm. because it was like right at first they were like they'd give you internet on your flip phone because yeah. it's like barely anything yeah. it's just getting a little bit of text back and then as soon as they released these iphones and they were like you can have internet too it's fine uh, the iphone users were using the internet and they were like whoa 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 yeah we did not anticipate how much more data you were going to use to load the full website and yeah. the the construction work in progress on this site gif that's yeah. gonna, you know what I mean? Is that that's a lot of data. Yeah. So I think it was like a, um, so let's say like the average cell phone plan now for like one person mm -hmm. is like eighty dollars a month, right? Yeah. To have like, oh maybe some some are slightly cheaper, some are slightly more expensive. Yeah. Um, to have your your data on your iPhone on your smartphone or whatever. Mm -hmm. At the time, I think my flip phone plan plan was like thirty dollars. Yeah. And to buy an iPhone, n n totally barring the cost of the iPhone itself. Yeah would then bump it up to $80 a month from yeah. what was, like, 20 or 30 at the time. Yeah. And it was like, maybe I won't, until yeah. it eventually was like, no, you should. Yeah. You should definitely get a smartphone. They're getting quite good. Yeah. Um, See, I, I avoided it for a long time just because, like, I, I didn't want to pay the extra cost, and I knew I would get super distracted by an iPhone. Sure. And yeah. guess what? Uh, the second I got an iPhone, I was super distracted Super distracted by, by it, yeah. Because it's extremely um, uh, stimulating. Yeah, Mentally, you yeah. like you'll have like a game on it that just like oh I have to go and collect things sure, on sure, it sure. or whatever. Or it's like I have all my social media right here at my fingertips. Yeah. Let me do 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 do. Just okay. doom scroll for a little exactly. bit. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So yeah, so it was very normal at first to not upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, so we have pages in the comic that are you know Liam has a flip phone. Yeah. Until late, he has, he still has one as of this page, right? Yeah. And Liam saying right now, my phone is a dinosaur, <laughs> is like a little um, self-deprecating. Yeah. But it's not that weird. Yeah. It's not like so much of a dinosaur. He's yeah. like, hi, I'm on the cusp of technology changing and I'm not doing it. Yeah. I don't want to... I don't want to <laughs> upgrade yet. Do you know what yeah, I mean? The tech savvy people would be like, oh, wow. Wow, well, you still have a flip phone? And like yeah. Milo, who is very like excited by the iPhone having come out, <laughs> yes. is like, oh, it's so cool. You know what yeah. I mean? Is like, so Liam can like kind of, you know, tease him a little bit. Like, remember, I don't have your cool phone. <laughs> like, I have this one. But it's not really like that yeah. odd yeah. at the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's like probably half their friends have that. I actually wouldn't be surprised if like Noel has a sure. Phone still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Eli definitely does. Eli definitely does. Yeah. Eli probably had one of those big block cell phones back in the nineties. Oh my god, I don't even want to think about that. And he probably he probably didn't even get rid of it until the mid two thousands. <laughs> that's real. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> he probably like his car probably still has the hookup. For oh my phones. god. <laughs> Oh my, my dad had a car phone yep. until like way too recently. Yeah. Like way too recently. Yeah, like prob probably when we started making the Probably comics. when we started making the comic. Yeah. So yes, I do like putting that on Eli too. Yeah. Wow, that is super funny. <laughs> a car phone! <laughs> oh god. Um, Old time. Yeah. So that page reads really weird now. Where yeah. he's like, this dinosaur. And people are like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's really a dinosaur. dinosaur. And it's like, no. <laughs> It's so funny to me, like, sometimes someone will, like, leave a comment about it, because yeah. that, that page where we had him calling that out was, like, probably made in, probably, like, 2015. Yes. So <laughs> by the time we made that page, it was, it was kind of like a meta joke. It was like, already, like, Haha. It really is a dinosaur, isn't it? And now it's 2020, and it's like, oh. It's it really, I dinosaur. don't think, there's, it's very difficult to find a flip phone still, even if you want it. Yeah. It's pretty, are you barking in your sleep? Because he's barking in our sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely, um, that is true. It's <laughs> getting older and older all the time. Oh, you know what they say. It keeps coming and it just keeps coming. It just, it just keeps, keeps coming. coming and it just keeps coming. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> that was a long tangent, but yes. you like doing research to see if things still yes. exist. <laughs> I forgot what the question was. So, yes, I do like drawing, um, from reference. Sure. And, um, like, I, I like drawing, like, 
Because uh, I'll, I'll get to explore a room that really exists, but then I make it a fictional room. Sure. Sometimes I have to change the proportions of it a little bit. Sure. And sometimes it's like, oh, this is like supposed to be this kind of place, but I instead make it this kind of place. Sure. Like, it's supposed to be, this is would be an office building, yeah. but this is where I want the restaurant to be. So yeah. I have to, like, imagine that it's a restaurant instead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, the office that they're in right now in the comic is not an actual office building. What is it? Um, I think it's like dorms or something. Oh, okay. Okay. But I or really like apartments liked, or something. I think it's dorms. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. But I really like the aesthetic of it. So sure. I just went for it. Sure. Because what? Why does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So then I made up the interior from like multiple other uh, law offices and having seen many a law office in my life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah <laughs> like for I, sure. I know what they like the inside like parts that are important that are fun to address. Absolutely. And I get to explore. Absolutely. And I just put it into this. What on the exterior is actually just a dorm. So, doing research, <laughs> and then taking the research and, and amalgamating it into a kind of fictional space. That's yeah. your favorite part of the process. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's like, usually I do try to keep it kind of realistic. Like, in this area, there was a lot of law offices. Mm -hmm. Like, there was like a good like four or five in the area. I just didn't like the way they looked on the outside. Sure. They were kind of boring or like, I don't know. They weren't as aesthetic as the one you wanted. Yeah. yeah. They just, they weren't what I pictured Eli working in. Sure. So I was like, I I'm just going to go for something different. That makes sense. You just have fun with that. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. I could see that being your favorite part of the process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably way more than inking. Do you prefer sketching to inking? I love sketching. Yeah. Um, I, I have a lot of fun with the sketch uh, process. Mm -hmm. And like sketching is usually the extent of what I go to when I'm drawing for fun. So sure. sketching is always my preference. But inking, I only don't like because it takes so much time. Sure. And, and also, more time spent on it means more time that your hand is tense, mm -hmm. which is a physical problem. Yeah, I become very tense. I, sure. You'll hear me snapping my... Snapping your thumbs, yeah. Because it's just like, they snap all the time now. Sure. And it's just because I'm a very tense person when I draw. Yeah, it makes sense. But um, sketching, I kind of get away from that sure. intensity. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to have things be so, like, this specific line has to fall right here to right. get it to look perfect. Right, exactly. And, I don't know, I could, I could learn some new habits, but it, it's very difficult once you get, the, like, this many years into learning new habits. Sure, yeah. But, yeah, I know what you, you mean. know. Yeah. But I, I can always learn more. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Um, what would you say my favorite part of the process is? Yeah, I'm really curious to know. Um, okay. I'll, I'll start by saying thumbnailing is probably my least favorite mm -hmm. part of the process. Mm -hmm. Um... I'm supposed to say favorite, and I said least favorite. <laughs> um, I but I it's really easier. I really dislike thumbnailing. Yeah, a lot, mm -hmm. like a lot, a lot. Um, so do I, and that's why I have you do it. <laughs> that's why I do it. <laughs> um, I would say I like doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't. I want. I'm trying to say the words. I don't hate it, but it's tough because <laughs> I'm. There are four lights. I hate it. There are four lights. I really, I slightly hate it. Yeah. But I think it's one of those things um, where I hate it as much as I love it. Mm -hmm. So I hate it because it's really hard. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of mental energy. Yeah. Even to just do like bare bones stick figures. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I've definitely heard a lot of people say that. That they don't I, like thumbnails? Yeah, I think... For a lot of people, thumbnails is the trickiest part because it's like having to get your ideas down into like very specific panels. And the pacing. Yeah. And, and the you, timing. You have to keep your pacing. You have to keep your timing. You have to um, figure out the panel that like the sizing that most accentuates what you need. Sure. And when you get into like um, for a toy, we do a lot of like the basic rectangular kind it's of It's very strip. Very yeah. strip comedy kind of slice yeah. of life kind of situation. But with DACA? Yeah, there's there's been a lot of angular ones, and that's like um, more often than not, I find that we do a combination, like because the um, extras get a lot of that too, where you'll give me a baseline thumbnail, and then in um, going to do the base sketch, sure, I start to add panels or change the shape of them. Yes, to yeah, a more... kind of to push it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, um, and I, I don't really do that with toy because toy is not a very actiony thing no yeah outside outside of even the extras like there's just no reason to have like an angle coming in right for a lot of even the most emotionally gripping scenes are very 
slice of life. Yeah. Like, even the most dramatic moments. Squally is sneezing, bless you. Um, even the most dramatic moments are very, um, this, this is someone's life. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, and I do like the aesthetic that having a very strip approach brings yeah. to toy. It feels very, um, it feels very real. Yeah, sometimes it, it just, it's not called for. And it, if we were to try to change the angles around a lot, I feel like it would change the mood too much. Right, I feel like it would feel a little insincere. Yeah. Not that, when Slice of Life does it and it's not toy, Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I it's, feel like it would just feel insincere for me. Yeah, I feel like everyone has to approach it in their own way. Right, and, and um, there'll, there'll be projects that I do that. Yeah. But I'll make the drama match yeah. the level of sincerity. Yeah. To, to meet it at yeah. the same place. Do you and, know what I mean? And for some cases, like, it's just, like, the fun of pushing it is what, like, makes it just, like, fun to do. Right. Like, just like, oh, I get to, like, have this, like, little angle for it. Right. But... I don't know. It, it just never quite fit right Yeah, totally. this project was just never quite the place for it, yeah. for sure. But, I mean... But I like it for what it yeah. is. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. So I would say, okay, so thumbnails are definitely my least favorite. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and there, there are times when I like them more, and I like the process of doing them. Yeah. I like the sitting down to do thumbnails. It feels very... Um, <laughs> It feels like going to work. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it feels good, and I like it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it's not my. It's probably my least favorite part yeah. of the whole process. Um, I don't. I'm gonna be honest. I don't love coloring. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my favorite. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I really enjoy it, but it. I don't. I don't derive a lot of satisfaction from Aww. it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Where it's like, um, how do I explain? <laughs> You're so disappointed. I don't mean oh, to no, disappoint I'm, you. I'm not disappointed. I, I'm sad to learn that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't I, mean to make I, you sad. I foisted it off onto you. No, 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 no. So, <laughs> so it's fine. I don't derive satisfaction from it, but I, I, mm, procedurally, Mm-hmm. It's it satisfies a part of my brain procedurally, but not creatively. Yeah, does it, I don't create the colors. Yeah, to me, it, like the colors go where they make sense to me to put yeah. them. Do you know what I mean? You're very logic brained on that. Yeah, it's not like it's it's not a very creative. I'm not painting. Yeah. I didn't draw the lines, so the colors just go where they go. I'm doing yeah. like a color by number, basically. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so I would say probably in terms of. The part of the process that I like the best, <laughs> Hi, Squally, is probably, I would say it's either writing the script, because mm-hmm. that's actually the most creative part. It, it satisfies my urge to create things. Yeah. I get to be creative in doing it, right? Yeah. It's not hard yet, mm-hmm. because it's not thumbnails. Yeah. Right? Um. I like, it's pure, like, it kind of rolls, and it's fun, and it's, like, joyous, and when it doesn't come easily, if I have, like, writer's block, it's easy to be like, okay, later. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? It's not, like, super um, imposing. It doesn't put a lot of pressure on me to do that part, and it hasn't gotten to the stage yet where I have to pace it and extrapolate it out into, like, this is a panel, and this is a panel, and this is a smaller panel, this is a wide panel. Yeah. This would be all three pages. You know what I mean? It's just, like, getting the action down. I could definitely see that. For yeah, you. I um, really, really like that part. Yeah, I seen you definitely enjoy that the most. Yeah. Come to think of it, um, I I have seen you enjoy coloring, but it makes sense that it's not like a love. It's just like a like. It's I I like doing it the same way I like um, baking. Oh yeah. Fair Whereas enough. I like cooking the yeah. same way that I like writing. Yeah, fair enough. It feels more like you can affect aspects of it. Yeah. Obviously, if I'm writing, I can affect things. Yeah. Whereas if I'm coloring, it's like, what's the way that I can make this pre-existent line art look best? Hmm. Which isn't, it, it feels more like a logical following steps. Yeah. In my brain, I guess, at least. Yeah. Um, That's but fair. But if I'm talking about, like, the part of the process that I'm sitting at the computer for, mm-hmm. and, like we do together like yeah. let's say if if the writing is like a, a part that exists before it even if i'm just talking about the process of making a page yeah my new favorite part of that is making word bubbles yeah fair enough i love making <laughs> word bubbles that makes a lot of sense because i like clip studio yeah <laughs> yeah clip studio is awesome for that i um, really really enjoyed their word bubble tool yeah yeah i've heard good things about indesign but i haven't played with it so, so um 
Yes, I have seen video yeah. of people making word bubbles in InDesign, and it is intense. It is, yeah, it, is it looks cool. Delicious looking. Yeah. But I don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, and Clip Studio is great for it, so. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so so I've seen people say the so um, InDesign will center the text in the bubble automatically. Mm -hmm. So as you um, so both Clip and InDesign will let you play with the bubbles in a non rasterized way. Yes. So which means vectored, which means that you can take the circle. Let's mm -hmm. say we'll call it a circle, right? You take the circle that is the outside of your word bubble, mm -hmm. and you can with your mouse or with your tablet pen or whatever mm -hmm. grab the end of the circle. And just drag it to make it bigger, and it'll it, it'll stay a circle. Yeah. It won't um it won't transform it. Yeah. So it doesn't change the pixels. Mm -hmm. It won't um make it look really pixelated. Mm -hmm. It won't make it look blurry. The same way you can imagine, like in MS Paint, if you yeah. like took a picture and you stretch it out and make it, it look gets, like, like JPEG compressed. Yeah, or like look like blurry and pixelated yeah. or whatever. Um. So these and and Clip was the first program I ever used that didn't have that had this tool yeah. where you could just like resize the circle and it would stay a perfect circle yeah and you could squash it or make it more tall or wide or whatever mm -hmm. and um and it wouldn't make it blurry and it wouldn't change so photoshop i used to do word bubbles in photoshop and mm -hmm. it would and it, you would have to basically the circle that you would draw would be the circle yeah good luck make, make it good do you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so so clip was the first time i'd ever experienced that yeah and it was a sheer delight i can totally understand why people would then also prefer that it centers the text yeah perfectly yeah. too because that can be a little stressful mm -hmm. but um i think it helps that i'm the only one doing it mm -hmm. and i have nothing else to do at that stage anyway yeah because doing the word bubbles comes at the beginning of the page while you're still sketching mm -hmm. um so so it doesn't take from you sketching, mm -hmm. and when you don't have inks for me to color yet, there's nothing else I can do anyway. Yeah. So I can take a good 20 minutes on it, yeah. and it really doesn't affect you, and it doesn't affect the speed of the page getting done, yeah. and I have nothing to do, so what, yeah. what am I going to do anyway? I might as well keep myself busy and kind of tinker with it and try to get it Yeah, size looking. it into something you enjoy. Yeah. Something that carries the mood. <laughs> Scully just threw himself down. He's having a tantrum a little bit. Our pets are, um, today they're, so I used, um, let, let me spell it. I don't know if she knows it's spelled. I, I said. I don't think so. W-A-L-K. Mm -hmm. I said we might G-O for a W-A-L-K mm -hmm. once we're done recording and I'm letting this video process and stuff. And Bisbee was beside herself. Yeah, she ran around for a little while trying yeah. to get us to leave. Yeah. That was that was our mistake. I, that was my mistake. So, you yeah, know, that was really... <laughs> I think I repeated it after you on accident. No, yeah, no I so, know. So, I, I think I reaffirmed that that's definitely a plan, and now we've already signed ourselves up for this. I have to watch the words that I use if I would like some relative quiet from her <laughs> for the next hour after I say them. Yeah, because then when she gets riled up, she gets squally riled up, and he walks around yelling for a while. Yes. And... Yeah, for sure. So he's so we're on like a um, if there's like relative peace right now. Besides like Bisbee's like a little snorry, she's yeah. snoring in her sleep a little bit probably because she's a little excited. But mm -hmm. um, but there's relative peace right now. But they're very like agitated and kind of like <laughs> meh. They're ready to go. <laughs> meh, meh, meh. <laughs> the noise my cat makes. <laughs> he really does. Oh my god. Meh. <laughs> right now he's just like looking up at you so lovingly. I know. Hey bud. <laughs> Do a podcast with us? Yeah, <laughs> it's like special sure. guest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's the CEO of our company. To yeah. be honest with you, he's been running it from day one. From day one, the whole thing is all for him. <laughs> <laughs> at, all, at only seven months old, can you believe it? I know. Amazing. I know. Really, truly, ahead of his time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really looking forward to the word I just spelled. Yeah. yeah. Going. On a W A L K to the P A R K. Yeah, exactly. Which she really loves. So. Yeah, it's a. I don't know. Have you? So I took Bisbee outside earlier, mm -hmm. um, and it is a very gorgeous. I think at this point probably like eighty degrees. Mm -hmm. um, it's been in the hundreds for a really long time, and mm -hmm. I know that sounds kind of still kind of up there and yeah. kind of gross actually for night time yeah. actually, um, but it is a 
gorgeous compared to yesterday and the day mm-hmm. before 80 degrees and i think it's only gonna get up to 90 today which that's amazing and it rained at night oh it's my favorite weather it's so nice <laughs> it's like the very beginning of fall starting mm-hmm. um which the, the tail end of what the monsoons are yeah which we barely had a monsoon this year yeah it so. was i think it only rained like two or three nights yeah um but it is right now the great it's not i wouldn't call it crisp mm-hmm. because i'm from massachusetts mm-hmm. so like crisp to me is like very is when it like gets down to like when it hits 50 that first mm-hmm. time it's like oh the air feels like crisp yeah you know what i mean um, I always think of, um, I, I grew up going to Idaho a lot, and like yeah. waking up at the crack of dawn, and like the air would be like so pine scented. Yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it would just be like, so it would be the crisp with that pine scent. That's cool. And then like the mist everywhere. That, sure. That is crisp. That's very crisp. <sighs> so I would not call Tucson crisp today. <laughs> Tucson <laughs> no. is not crisp. Um, it is still, it's it's somewhat muggy. Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps unpleasantly so if you're, yeah. If you were to step into it, my hair will curl the second I step outside. That's why I didn't do mine. Because <laughs> last time we took a walk, it just it curled right up, and I was like, "Oh, oh oops, all right. all right, okay." So, um, so it's I would I would definitely call it a little muggy, mm-hmm. but compared to what it's been, it's so breathable. Comfortable. It's, it's very comfortable. That's exciting. And I really, um, I really look forward to <laughs> what it's gonna be going forward from yeah. here. I'm really looking forward to fall, and um, I'm really looking forward to maybe getting a little more adventurous with our hikes. I know. We actually, uh, we have some places that we can go hiking soon, too. Yeah. That would be really nice. Um, unfortunately, I have to keep looking into places that we can bring dogs. But... Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe about, like, a third yeah, of a third the trails of are dog-friendly. Um, so, you know, people mm-hmm. have to, you know, you have to clean up after them, but a lot of people don't still so they the parks that are very important to mm-hmm. keep very pristine they don't even want to take the risk yeah you know what which I, mean? I don't blame them i don't either um but there's there's a lot of wildlife here um tucson's very about the wildlife yeah for sure so, so it's i'm very i'm very excited for um doing some daytime hikes soon yeah and being able to exist outside and not, yeah <laughs> not melt every single time yeah that's exciting <laughs> um so i'm i'm really looking forward to fall it feels like it's been a very long summer. Yeah, I I actually forgot when spring ended. It just felt like summer started back in March. Well, I mean, it is 2020 also, and so yeah. everything feels like it's bleeding into itself. Yeah. <laughs> everything kind of feels like it's out of time. One big long day. <laughs> yeah, it really truly does. But summer felt long. On yeah. top of that, it felt it was very hot. Yeah. And it wasn't cool to feel like cooped up in the oh, apartment. Bad time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really um I'm looking forward to maybe going up the mountain. Yeah. And uh, maybe seeing some trail, some yeah. new trails and stuff. That would be really nice. Yeah. The nice thing about the comic is that it is kind of a break from the monotony because it is kind of something that um, we do have a set plan for. Like, we do have the twice a week updates. Mm-hmm. We do have other little things to work on with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the comic has been a great relief for being able to just break ourselves out of yeah, that monotony. for sure. And there's so many parts to it mm-hmm. that it never really, even though parts do feel monotonous, Yeah, they never, because you bounce around between so many moving parts, mm-hmm. it never feels totally monotonous. Yeah. So it is It is nice for that. And hopefully that is a benefit. with some new projects, even the content of the comics themselves will mm-hmm. start to feel kind of broken up and, and varied from each other too. Yeah, So that's sure. pretty cool. So. Um, oh, okay, so I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna wrap this up. Um, we're kind of close to the end. So, if you got this far, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Um, I continue to have a great time with you. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, like learning fun. new things about you. Same. So I've been married to you for so long, and I'm still learning things. It's crazy. It's great. It is, <laughs> and, and it's some parts of making the comic too. Yeah. I'll learn as we go yeah. about like what we like about it yeah. and what to focus on. Yeah, for sure. So. All right. Have a good one. Have a good one.